in the 2000 presidential election, one of the most one of the most close elections of all time happened, and it's also one of the most contested. Today we will be exploring all the possible opportunities for both Al Gore and George Bush to have won. It is important to note here that the winner of the popular vote of the presidential election does not necessarily win. Uh, votes are not do not come directly from the people but come from the states. Each state gets a certain amount of electoral votes according to their population with a few adjustments to give the smallest state, smaller states an advantage. The system which is called the Electoral College. All the electoral votes are then cast for the candidate that each state voted for, a majority of each state voted for, and except for when they don't. Elect electors in the Electoral College can vote for whomever they want, technically, although they usually vote for whoever the state tells them to. Al Gore won the popular vote in the 2000 election. However, he lost in the Electoral College, thus making George Bush president. However, there are several scenarios in which Al Gore could have won the Electoral College. By the election day, neither candidate had the 270 electoral votes necessary to win. The only state left to submit its vote was Florida. Whoever won the 25 votes in Florida would then win the election. Originally, Bush was declared the winner of Florida, but by a small margin of 537 votes out of 6 million casted votes. This margin was small enough to call for a recount of the votes under the Florida law. With margins this close, it was clear that every vote counted and anything that could have influenced any vote at all determined the final election count. Gore sued the state of Florida and called for a recount of the votes by hand in three of the most critical counties. The Florida Supreme Court upheld this. The election was so close that people simply filling out their ballots wrong could influence the results. Gore called for a recount by hand so that actual humans, instead of machines, could figure out which candidate people intended to vote for. The issue was with the ballot, and there were, several, there were two different types of errors people made over voting and under over voting and under voting. In order to fill out your ballots, you would punch a hole through an area on the ballot next to the candidate you wanted to vote for. The resulting piece of paper that fell out was called a chad. Some chads were left dangling on the ballot, referred to as hanging chads. Al Gore was concerned whether or not these votes would be counted. Overvoting was the result of voting for more than one candidate. There were 100,000 overvoted ballots that weren't counted, but at least 3% of these should have been counted as a legitimate vote, enough to change the results of the final election. There were also around 10,000 overvotes in, in counties with the confusing instructions on the ballot, causing people to vote for a candidate on each page, which resulted in invalidated ballot and invalidated votes. There were other types of mistakes too. Tens of thousands of people voted for Bush or Gore as a writing candidate instead of punching their names. These votes were not counted in the punch hole machines. 60,000 people voted for Gore this way compared to 40,000 who voted for Bush, and had these results been counted, Gore would have won. There was also confusion over the so-called butterfly ballots. The way, they, the way they look at an angle caused a disproportionate number of people in the counties they were used in to vote for the Reform Party candidate instead of Gore, as it appeared the hole was next to the Reform Party's ticket. There were also accusations of roadblocks being created on election day in heavily democratic areas. Around 50,000 people had their votes invalidated for being convicted felons. However, many of these people were not actually felons and just happened to share the same name as one. As a majority of these people were being black, it was presumed that they would have had, they would have voted more heavily towards Al Gore. The fact that Bush's younger brother was the governor of Florida at the time can be blamed for the voting system. Finally, there is one more subject to cover: Republican complaints. Florida has two different time zones, which close their powels an hour apart. Every single media outlet incorrectly reported that they all closed at the same time, undoubtedly causing some people in the Republican-heavy west of Florida who would have voted for Bush not to vote at all, thinking that the polls closed an hour earlier than they actually did. In mid-December, the Supreme Court ordered for a halt in the recount, saying that the recount was unconstitutional. This decision was made heavily was heavily criticized for being a partisan one in a conservative-dominated court. The electoral votes were given to George Bush, who went on to win the presidency. Yep, that's a vote for Bush. Well, I voted in the uh, Florida election in 2000, and I voted with my friends, and uh, what if I vowed was kind of confusing. I only later realized that I had actually voted for uh, 
Reform Party candidate Pat Buchanan. I actually wanted to vote for Al Gore, and I'm not sure my vote was counted like that, and I'm somewhat disappointed by it. It was the end of the world. Well, so uh, I voted in the Florida election 2000. Uh, there were some butterfly ballots. They were really confusing. I want to vote for Al Gore, but I'm re I'm a retard, so I actually voted for. Uh, Don't. <laughs>